Hello, I'm JW. This time we're going to have a look at the Allen West Spike Tech Toe again. And this is the thing that in a previous video we just basically took apart and looked inside to see how the thing was made. And this time we're going to actually power it up and uh, hopefully get the thing working. And uh, this thing, of course, is the one that detects spikes or pulses on uh, some kind of supply, allegedly up to 5,000 volts. And I've got two modes, one of which is a single mode, so basically when a spike is detected a light comes on, and then the other mode is a counting mode, so it actually displays the number of spikes detected on the mechanical counter on the front. Now this thing uh, claims to take things in the region up to 5,000 volts. Obviously we're not going to be applying 5,000 volts to it today because that would be somewhat dangerous and unnecessary. So we'll just apply a fairly low voltage and hopefully we can get the thing working. Now we see saw this in a previous episode and still got it out of the case mainly because of this uh, switch here which is somewhat uh, cracked on the back so Rather than uh, turn the switch here, just going to turn the actual shaft in the back there using some pliers to avoid any further damage there. And uh, basically what I've got here, I've just connected the two leads it came with to the negative or the common basically. And we're going to use the lowest to the voltage input here, which is the up to 50 volt version. So there's no point applying hundreds or thousands of volts to this, it's uh, going to work just as well on any of them. And uh, we saw previously it took uh, three PP7 batteries, but we're not going to be buying any of those because they are horribly expensive, we're looking at 15 to 20 pounds each. And of course it needs three of them, so uh, very best if we're looking at sort of 50 or 60 pounds worth of batteries, which just for demonstration is of course somewhat pointless. So we're going to use the bench supply here, and uh, we're going to apply voltage in the region of 25 volts. Now in theory the three batteries, of course 9 volts each, would make 27, but uh, we'll stick with 25 as a reasonable sort of mid-area. Uh, specification on this thing claimed it worked uh, well below that, so 25 should be fine. Um, we're going to set the current here to about 100 milliamps or so, so uh, in case something shorts inside we don't want uh, flames and smoke coming out of it. And I've just used these two leads just to clip on to the appropriate battery terminals here to get power into the thing. And the two leads here are, say, the original test leads that it came with, and in order to provide some pulses or spikes or whatever, it's going to use this signal generator here. So just got the leads here going straight to the terminals on the front here and uh, we've set the selections here to in the range between 1 and 10 hertz so it's basically one pulse per second or up to 10 pulses a second. Specification this claimed it could record up to 8 per second on the mechanical counter so that's fine we can use the knob here to adjust between 1 and 10 and then the two here this is basically the output level and this is DC bias which we may or may not use but we'll see how it goes. And uh, waveform type here, we've actually got a sawtooth wave, which should be nice and spiky for the thing. In theory, it should work on uh, the others, but we'll go for the sawtooth wave anyhow. And uh, in terms of actual output, we'll uh, just say, see how it goes over there. Now we're going to start out with a fairly low voltage, because say we don't want to be putting uh, huge voltages into the front of this, because bearing in mind this is pretty old, we don't know how good the components are. They could already be completely destroyed for all we know. So. First of all, we'll try the uh, single mode, and the idea here is that if the spike is detected above the level we've set using the controls, then this light should turn on. So I'll uh, just turn on the supply here, and you see initially we're talking about 11 milliamps or so at 25 volts, so that seems uh, perfectly reasonable and within the norms of what you would expect. Certainly no short circuit going on. So we'll turn on this thing, and we can already see the light has come on, so at least we know that something is actually working and we can reset using the button here and it's still coming on so if we just turn down the level a bit there and it's still coming on we should be able to use this to uh, yes basically set the level of the actual spike there so we've got pretty low range here because we're only applying a very small voltage and basically if we turn back towards the point yeah the light will come on at the point set on the dial there so yeah, that's the on point there. Obviously that's holding off there, and then if the spike was to increase by turning this knob, then in theory, yeah, if we go up to the range, then it will be above the level it will trigger at. So that seems entirely reasonable. So if we turn that down, we can reset here, and then if we turn the knob up here, yeah, then it will come on when it gets to the level set. So. Yeah, some experimentation there may be needed to get the appropriate level, but basically uh, no spike detected, and when we're increasing the voltage above the level, then it will trigger and crucially stay on, even though we've turned down the output to minimum there. So 
that seems to work fine. And I say we're not going to turn the switch here because it is actually loose from the shaft in the back, so we'll uh, avoid that. So uh, next thing, I'll just turn the uh, thing at the back here to the count mode and see how that works as well. So now we're in the count mode, so I'll just move that there just for indication purposes. This is not actually uh, connected to the shaft. So same settings as before, and again we can reset this. Uh, it should also reset the mechanical counter. And if we turn this up, we should then get this counting up at a rate of, say, uh, once a second there. So. OK, well there it is, it's uh, counting away, clicking up there. I'm not sure we can actually see that, so let's just have a closer look. So here's a close look at the actual counter here. And if I turn up the voltage on the uh, signal generator, then we can see that counting away there at approximately one hertz. So we can turn up the frequency. That's in the range of 4 hertz, or sort of 4 per second. This is supposed to cape with things up to 8 per second, so let's turn up a bit more. So that is about uh, 8 hertz there, and it seems to be coping with that fairly well. Let's see how much further it will go. Well, there we go, it seems a bit stumbling now, that's only 9, so uh, 8 does seem to be its actual limit. Seems to work just fine. And again, if we turn down the level, obviously it will only detect them over a certain preset threshold. So, the thing actually does seem to work properly. And even when it's actually counting there, current consumption is only around uh, 50 milliamps, which again seems uh, perfectly reasonable for a device of this type. And then it's sort of just resting state there. Current is. Uh, approximately around sort of 11 or 12 milliamps or so, and again that's at 25 volts DC, which would result sort of reasonably new batteries but not sort of uh, completely fully charged. And in terms of this is uh, intended use, I think the idea would be that you would connect this to whatever the supply or power is what you were intending to monitor, which uh, of course uh, you would assume initially would not have any spikes on it, and then you would adjust the uh, controls as appropriate. We're currently in the uh, count mode here. So that if spikes were present, we wanted to set this to essentially the sort of threshold point. So if you say I had a supply of, say, 100 volts, you'd want to set this so that uh, at 100 volts it didn't actually do any counting, but at a certain level above that, then of course it would detect things sort of in excess of that. So you would essentially adjust the knob here, and I see at that point there it is actually counting. And then if we turn to this point, say, uh, somewhat beyond, and of course that result in sort of normal operating state. And then if a pulse did occur which was above the level set, that is what of course would show on the display. And something like that, so just sort of turning up the uh, level there and it would count however many pulses you had. And then the single mode would be if uh, you didn't, or really whatever application you're using, couldn't really tolerate any kind of spikes. So in this case, rather than just seeing how many there were, even on this case just having one would be uh, considered a fairly major problem. And again, you would just set that there so that you could leave this running for an extended period of time. And then should a spike occur, which of course theoretically could damage whatever the equipment was you were intending to use, if you saw the light was on, then you know that at least one spike had actually occurred within that period of time. And in terms of the other connections here, the only difference here would be that uh, this socket is only for spikes up to 50 volts. And then if you were expecting larger ones, you'd connect to here for spikes, say, up to 500 and this top one here up to 5,000. And as we saw in the previous video, all this is basically doing is just putting a larger resistor between the uh, actual input and the circuitry inside. So the impedance basically of the input increases. So this is the lowest impedance one. This I think had a one mega ohm resistor. And then this one had a 10 mega ohm resistor. So it's basically doing exactly the same thing. It's just whichever level of uh, voltage of spikes you were expecting to get. So see, that's it uh, running away there, and I say with the lamp on, it's uh, sort of just about 66, 67 milliamps there at the 25 volts, which uh, doesn't seem too outrageous. 
and of course with the lamp off it drops down to around the sort of 12 or so mark whereas of course the lamp is going to use a fairly significant amount of current being an incandescent star which gets fairly hot. So that's the uh, Allen West Spike Tector, a device which if you go and search on Google you find pretty much nothing. So uh, either this thing was only made for a short period or there weren't very many made or uh, obviously it wasn't a particularly popular device for people to use because it's certainly unusual to find absolutely nothing on Google. And so if you go and search there, it really is the end result of this video, and uh, that's pretty much about it. And in terms of who would actually use this, or its intended market when it's manufactured, it's not entirely clear. But uh, obviously it had uh, some kind of purpose. It's not just a, uh, a one-off item, because it had those sales leaflets and things which we've seen previously. So if you've got any other information about who may or may not have used this thing, or maybe you used one back in the day, then please leave a comment in the section below this video. But until next time, thanks for watching.